Hello everyone, I'm back to do another video to tell you a little bit about the background of my channel, A Work of Art. This is a, um, a labor of love um, over the years, just from learning and from being more open to different kinds of looks and different things. When I was a little girl, I was raised by a state trooper who had a, a, a big family in a small house, and we didn't have a lot of money, and I just really felt like I was wanting to get out from there and, and, and have more more freedom and for more um, just more, more fun things and more more fashion and more um, just more life. And I was reading fashion magazines back in the in all, all the early days and really wanted to know what was happening in the big city. I eventually went to New York with, with Longcomb and had my training there, which is amazing. And that was basically a, um, a, an awakening that it was an amazing city and I would love to visit there for a long time, but I would not want to live there because it's so crowded and so crazy. But that's kind of what I, what I learned when I went back to Alaska. Um, and I lived there for 30 years before I moved down to Arizona. And so um, a few years ago, eight, about eight years ago, my father got sick. He was very sick with a form of cancer. And it was just a really awful, awful experience and very hard to deal with. And I had bought three plane tickets, two, two plane tickets actually, one person and one and the ticket was bought for me because I didn't have to get back in time to, to catch my father before it was too late. So I ended up spending time with him at the very end of his life. And um, it was a very, very hard time. And all my life I, I, I thought back to when we were wearing all those kind of you know, autumn colors, all those fall colors that are kind of they were outdated. They, they were really popular in the 70s, but not in the 80s and not in the 90s and all that. So I feel kind of bad that I even thought about that because I thought that I had the best fashion sense and I had the best colors I was wearing and I had the best clothes and I was really working on babysitting all the time to make money to buy, to buy clothes. And so I was buying clothes that I thought were really beautiful and were going to just make me look like, you know, somebody different than myself. And I found out the hard way, or not the hard way, but I found out the, the, it's a good way still that um, the way I was made, the colors that I was born with, the shades that, that are inherent within my, my, my complexion and my, my skin tone, and like we all have the same, our same differences in our own skin, um, that was really, really an awakening for me. So anyway, so one of the things I, I'll show you some of the colors that I wore that I, uh, that, and you'll notice that I'm wearing black and I'm wearing, I'm really pale, I'm wearing black again for work. So black is the worst color I could wear. It's, it sucks the life out of my skin, it makes me look really pale, and it's not just pretty at all. So I'm basically wanting to um, show, you know, prettier colors as I go from from the, the crazy colors in the 80s to the colors that I'm wearing now. So I'll first start off with uh, just kind of creating things. This was a, a top that I thought was really pretty. And if you look under my eye area, you can see there's, I, I do have a little bagginess under my eyes. And it really doesn't cover up my skin at all. It doesn't go with my skin tone. My skin's pretty neutral. And... Um, I've got my blonde highlights in there, but basically it's still pretty neutral. It's pretty like much ashy kind of color, but it's still a warmer ash, I guess. So this really isn't the best thing. It, it doesn't really, um, it, it comes in the room before me. You want the, to, your, your face to look beautiful. You want to walk into a room and have everyone see you first, and the outfit's kind of secondary. So this color definitely overpowers me. It makes me look paler. So then we'll go to another, this is just an Adidas top, but again, it doesn't really connect to me at all. And I thought that this was so pretty. I would wear, uh, add a pink lipstick to it and do things like that to kind of make it match and and be cute. And I, I can still do that. I have a makeup artist who can do all kinds of things with makeup. But for actual you know, authenticity for my own coloring, this is nothing like my skin tone. And then as I got a little closer, I, this is a sweatshirt from, from Hawaii. A little bit better. It's still, yeah, it's, it's okay. And that's just a kind of a peachier color. And then I have two different blushes to show you that I'll apply on either side. This is the the um, Dolce Pink from Milani. That blush there. Or this one was Luminoso. And that was a peachier one. So it's kind of hard to see if you think one like looks better than the other. Which one's a better choice for me? I do wear both of them actually, but I think I, I think this is a better color for me overall for my skin tone. And then for lipsticks, I did the same thing. I pulled out a pink lipstick that I thought was just gorgeous. I asked a lady after at my course one time. I said, "Do you like this color on mommy? This new color that I'm wearing?" And it was this one. And she says, "Yes, this is so much better. It, it's not that violent pink you used to wear." So kind of a funny thing. So I'll do actually. Um, 
each cheek with blush felt after I do my kind of reveal. So here's the rest of my story. So my father had tons of flannel shirts. He was basically a, a, a state trooper. He was undercover a bunch of times. He was out walking the creeks in plain clothes. And um, anyway, so at the end of his life, he had lots of, of jeans and shirts and things like that. And so um, I thought I'd kind of help out my mom and clear out his, his old clothes and find some people to, to take them. And so I really wanted to have a shirt or so from him to, because I just felt like it would be nice to have something warm and soft, you know, around me. And so anyway, the only colors that, the only shirts that were actually the size that even would possibly work for me were a, a gray color, which is terrible on me. It seemed worse than black. And then this um, olive green shirt. So I, I wore the shirt and I just, I put it on and I, it felt kind of like I was being hugged by my father. And he actually was a painter. So that's part of the other, the other part of it. Um, I kind of honoring my father. My mother still, um, she does a little bit less, less painting now because of her fingers are numb from, from illness. But um, anyway, so I'll go ahead and I'll tell you that I went to my mom's um, doctor's office and had to, had to go, you know, pick her up from her appointment. And some people around the corner, some techs in the, in the department, they were like, oh my God, that is Art Paul. And he looked at me and she, and she absolutely, absolutely knew that I was his daughter because of how I looked, because of my face shape, my eye shape, my coloring, things like that. Um, and then I also wore the shirt a lot. I was up there for a month, I stayed before, um, for a month later so I could take care of my family, most of my mom and things like that, and things in her, 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 her household. But um, anyway, this is the shirt that I picked from my father. And it's just an oval, or an olive shirt. And it's just a basic shirt, but what happened was people kept saying, you look so beautiful. And I kept getting these compliments from people that just thought I just had beautiful skin and I, I, I've been crying, I've been, my bones were aching from, from pain, from, from, from sobbing but people kept saying how pretty I looked in these kinds of colors. So anyway, so that's kind of how I um, I kind of got really um, focused on that and, and how um, I could honor him. And you look at the colors above, my, my grandmother is Dutch, and so I have a Van Gogh picture. It's just a, it's just a painting, but it's or a picture, a painting of a picture. Um, opposite. <laughs> anyway, so that's basically the colors there kind of go with, that's why those colors are, are those colors too, all the these bright ones here. So that's kind of why I did that. I also sent a letter to a, a blogger named Christine Scommon, who is now a color analyst, and she does all kinds of color matching things and, and finding the best colors for you. And she's really, really talented. And, and beyond that, that people have spread off. She's trained a lot of people now, and there's people all over the country, and actually all over the world, that can find the right colors for you if they... Um, I mean, have you see in person? It's hard to do over online. You can't really do online very well, but it's really nice to have good colors for you to see. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do the blush and the, um, oops, just so you can see the, there's the pink. And I'll try and do half my lip with the pink lipstick. So pretty bright, you can see where that's kind of not quite right, actually. <laughs> and then we'll go to the peachy side. So we'll get Voluminoso from Milani. Okay, a little bit more on that one than this side, but the color I think is still better. I will go back and make this match so it's equal application. It'll be more of a good test. Okay, so my lipstick for the other side, the non-violent paint color, is called Rosette by Clinique. So you can look at the cool side and the warm side. I kind of like the warm side better. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my video, and next time I do a, a, a video about that subject, I think I'll probably bring my father's paintings in here, and you can see what my paintings look like. So thank you so much for watching, and have a lovely day.